Good morning, welcome back to another episode of Children's Scripture Investigation. I'm Dave, your host, and here are our top stories this morning. Firstly, the government has eased its restrictions on travel destinations for holidays. While this is great news, we have found in our research that even people who have never been on a holiday in all their lives are booking up destinations all over the world, both home and abroad, just because they now can. We will exercise our rights. In other news, I had to turn the lights on in the studio this morning because when I came to work, there was absolutely nobody here. Truth is, probably everybody's fed up with working with me now, although I can't see why, but I, ever the optimist, would like to think it's because everybody has just gone on holiday all at the same time. But seriously, this morning we were going to be investigating the life of Lilius Trotter and sending our top investigator, Miss Anna Meacham, back in time to the late 1890s to Algeria to catch up with the missionary and her work there on the African continent. The sad fact is that Anna is nowhere to be seen like everybody else and I'll have to do it myself. The good news is that I found a note on uh, Tea Time Patrick's desk in the Time Lab telling me that he has given me remote access to the time machine and I can perhaps even bring Lydius here to the studio. So I will try this now. Let's activate the time machine remotely. There we are. Opening to Algeria around 1880, 1890. It's coming up on the screen. There's Lydius now, I believe. And let's bring her through. That's working now. Here we go. Oh, here she comes. Ah, oh, hello. Uh, Who are you? Lilius Trotter, I'm, I'm Dave. Uh, Lilius Trotter, I presume. Yeah, where am I? Oh, fantastic. Uh, I suppose the better question is more, when am you? Uh, this is the 21st century. We're a few years into the future. Uh, and we brought you forward to, to talk to you. You're looking a little shocked and surprised. Yeah, well, I'm not really sure how I, how I got here. Uh, time machine, uh, I suppose. Never mind. It's probably easier if I ask you a few questions. Uh, we're a Christian studio. We like to uh, talk to Christians from the past who serve the Lord, who love the Lord Jesus, and have gone to tell people about him. And um, so if you're happy uh, and you've got nothing else to do, we wonder if you'd be happy to answer a few questions. Well, I'm here now, aren't I, as well? Yes, you are. Okay, well, uh, normally we have somebody who is actually paid to do this and they know what they're doing. Uh, sadly, they're nowhere to be seen, so uh, I've written down a few things, if you don't mind, and I'll just bumble through them. Um, I suppose the first thing to uh, establish with our viewers, uh, you've been in Algeria for a few years, um, and you s a s seem a little settled. How long have you been there now? Um, oh, it must be 10 years now. Um, yeah, yeah, I was 35 when I, when I arrived in Algeria, so yeah, yeah, a good, a good 10 years. Okay, and you're sort of comfortable in your surroundings there now and, and with the culture and everything? Yeah, when we first arrived, um, I didn't know the language at all. Oh, wow. Um, we had to learn from English to French and then French to, to Arabic, which was a bit, bit tricky, but um, yeah, after a few months or years, really, of kind of immersing myself in the culture, um, yeah, I seem pretty settled now, I think. Yeah, oh, that's like fantastic. Home. Yeah, you look very uh, very relaxed in the environment we just uh, took you from. Um, but truth be told, you say 10 years. I mean, we do know from our research that you were doing missionary work before coming to Algeria, back in the UK. Yeah, um, I was working in London. And as you know, mission work doesn't just go on abroad, it goes on you know, everywhere. Um, so yeah, living and working in London. And there was a hostel there for um, women and children. So I spent a lot of time working for them. And working with with the, the women uh, who who were there, um, yeah, we did things like uh, setting up a cafe or a restaurant because okay. it was really difficult for working women to get an affordable lunch um, at the time. I assume still now, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so we set up the, the first restaurant in London where where women could specifically could come in and, and get a get a cheap but decent meal. Wow, real pioneering work. But when I think about that, that's not really the environment you came from. You weren't at those lower classes, really. Uh, I mean, without putting too fine a point on it, you've come from quite great wealth, haven't you? Yeah, you could say that. Um, my parents are quite uh, famous in their own right. Um, my great granddad as well, he's quite uh, well known. Um, he's the one who designed the, uh, the coins for Bonnie Prince Charlie, should yeah, he have right, yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Bad part of history, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we won't talk about that. Um, yeah, so we had a lot of money, really. Um, had a really nice upbringing, yeah, quite different from the surrounding ones, working in London and, I guess, in Algeria as well. Um, yeah, had whatever I wanted, really. Massive house, private tuition. Ah, so, I mean, we see, and this is a fine work of art we've accidentally brought through with you, but uh, is that because the money then, you know, was a, a great way for you to learn to paint? Yeah, I guess so. Um, my, my artistic streak, I guess, comes from my family. Um, my parents are, are quite quite good painters and, mm -hmm. and artists yeah. themselves. Um, but I think my, my talent was kind of honed by John Ruskin. The famous artist? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, my, my mother actually introduced me to him. She sent him some of my drawings and asked him to look over them. Yeah. Uh, and he, like, like what I saw, he saw, I guess. And uh, yeah, so he kind of took me under his wing and he, he taught me everything I know. So yeah, it's, it's down to it, really. Wow, a protege of John Ruskin. That's incredible. I suppose having a friend, a, a close friend of such fame and, and talent must be an amazing thing. Are you still in touch with him now? I wish I was. Um, it's a bit of a sad story, really. Um, yeah, he, he was really good to me, he taught me everything, he kind of kind of took me around with him and, yeah. uh, and showed me uh, all the inner workings of the art world and just really kind of helped me develop my career, but um, <laughs> bless him, he's so passionate about art and you could see that my mission work was getting in the way of, of what I was producing, um, so one day he kind of gave me a choice, I had to choose between art and giving myself 100% to that or mission yeah. work and yeah, he asked me to give up what God had called me to. Um, just to focus on art, so, well, it was a no-brainer really, I, mean, I knew I wasn't going to give up what God had called me to, but it's just, it. it's just yeah. sad that I had to kind of put art on the back burner for a bit. Yes, well, we know you love the little Lord Jesus very much and you've always been passionate about sharing him, so, I mean, I was going to say you give up the art entirely, but here we've grabbed you from a beautiful Algerian landscape, so, still yeah. in use? Yeah, definitely. Um, God was really gracious because he called me to, to Algeria, which I think is one of the most beautiful places on earth. It's got the most wonderful landscapes, the flowers, the trees, the people, the sea, the mountains. Um, it's just gorgeous. So yeah, when I get a spare minute, this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm painting and drawing. Um, and you know, how, how is it you're able to use this uh, sort of artistry skills and literacy that we know that you're in as well? Uh, how are you able to, to integrate that into the mission work then in Algeria? Yeah, well, I think mission work has to be different to each country you go to. Um, so the stuff we did in London is not the stuff I'm doing here in Algeria. Understandable. Um, working with the same sort of people, mm -hmm. uh, women and children. And um, so we d we've done stuff like setting up uh, a restaurant or a cafe, I guess, in, in the local style. We've done classes for women, like sewing, other kind of life skills. Oh, um, you even be able to produce these, these cards that have got Bible verses on. Um, they've got some, some drawings on. Um, but they've got the Bible verses written in Arabic so they, we can hand them out and people can, uh, can read them for themselves. That's fantastic, yes, and obviously you spoke about learning the language to be able to do that. But we know that Algeria, in, in your time uh, particularly, is uh, largely Muslim. Uh, does that not bring dangers and things with it uh, in that environment? Yeah, I think it's more dangerous for the converts, to be honest. I think it's more dangerous for those who are, who are Muslim and converting to Christianity because well, we've, we've heard some quite horrible stories about what happened to people uh, recently when they've become Christians. Um, when I first arrived in Algeria, I think the government were quite suspicious of us. Um, we had spies living across from us and we were followed spies, quite a few times. Wow. Yeah, well, I don't think the government quite knew what we were doing. Um, we were the kind of first people in that area to be, to be sharing Jesus with people. Um, but thankfully, over time, um, our government and their government have kind of... Well, the relationship is a bit better. The relationship's a bit better now. Um, so yeah, we kind of have a lot more freedom than we did to start with, just to kind of share share the gospel openly. Oh, fantastic! Well, you know, that's incredible, really. And in today, uh, I can't give you too many details. I don't want to tell you the future, but um, your work is still greatly appreciated. Uh, yeah. We we have seen much of your literacy and of your artistic uh, talents and abilities, and uh, you know, it's wonderful to see that that God didn't let those things go to waste and how he used those and, and was able to use you through those things to, to share with, with the boys and girls and the men and women, uh, particularly the, the women and children in Algeria. So we'll, we'll probably finish there. Um, I, I shan't shake your hand. We've got some issues going on uh, today that we'll just keep our distance, but we'll, uh, we'll get ready to send you back, hopefully to the beautiful landscape that you're in and all being well, we'll leave you to the rest of your life. So that's us getting you ready. 
and that should be sending you now. Well, boys and girls, there we go. Lilius Trotter, a woman who loved the Lord Jesus so much and was greatly appreciative of the, the gifts, the skills and the abilities that he gave her. And she really wanted to use them for the Lord's work. And he gave uh, those preparations for her. She had the money and the wealth to be set up, ready to go and serve the Lord in this place. And having the training under John Ruskin to be able to find, uh, tune and to hone those skills as an artist particularly. That then when she was called to that mission work, she was able to use those skills to maximum effect to serve the Lord and to tell people about Jesus through her paintings, through her illustrations, through her work and these little cue cards and the verses for the children. And many uh, communities were changed. Many lives were, were saved and people found out about the love of Jesus because of her dedication and of her work. And as she just shared with us herself, that she felt that it wasn't a waste, that turning aside from a career as a famous artist or illustrator or even um, as a writer was not a waste because she felt, or she still feels as I should say, that she is achieving so much more in serving Jesus in this way. And you know, boys and girls, Jesus can use you in the same way with the skills and abilities that you may have or that you're developing or the passions that you have. You know, when we give them over to the Lord, and we say this often, don't we? But God will use them in a mighty way. And he can do great things uh, in his name. And if you love Jesus, then you can serve him in whatever, whatever, whatever way he can use you in. Well, we're going to cut to our music studio. And I'm sure we've got another chorus that we can sing along these lines. So it's over to you now. Hey guys, welcome back to the music studio and we're going to be thinking of all that Lilia Strotter was sharing, her love for literacy but mostly art and how she used that to share the love of Jesus with the Muslims mostly in Algeria. So the song is called Colours of Day and although it's speaking of physical things, it's also referring to the spiritual and sharing the light and the love of Jesus with everyone else. So if you know the song, please join in. If not, let's learn a new song together. <laughs> Colors of day dawn into the mind The sun has come up, the night is behind Go down in the city, into the street Let's give the message to the people we meet So light up the fire and let the flame burn Open the door, let Jesus return Take seeds of his spirit, let the fruit grow Tell the people of Jesus, let his love show. Go through the park, out into the town. The sun still shines on, it never goes down. The light of the world is risen again. The people of darkness are needing a friend. So light up the fire and let the flame burn. Open the Seeds of His Spirit, let the fruit grow. Tell the people of Jesus, let His love show. Open your eyes, look into the sky. The darkness has come, the sun came to die. The evening draws on, the sun disappears. Jesus is living, His Spirit is near. So light up the fire. Take seeds of His Spirit, let the fruit grow Tell the people of Jesus, let His love show There we go, thanks for joining us this morning, back to you in the studio. Well, that about wraps up our time for this episode on Children's Scripture Investigation. Thank you for joining us, we look forward to seeing you again next week with our next person. Until then, do stay safe, goodbye. God bless.